Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining The Brain 101. My name is Matt Caton, and it looks like we're going to be getting started right on time today. Thank you so much for joining me. The purpose of today's webinar is really to give you an introduction into the Brain application. I'm going to be talking about all the basic features that you need to know in order to start using the brain and creating a digital reflection of your own organic thought process. And that's really the purpose of the brain software is to become your digital brain um, and keep track of data, files, any type of digital information that you may have. Your digital brain never forgets. My own organic brain forgets all the time, but luckily the digital brain never forgets. Everything that you put into the brain can always be recalled upon quickly and easily at a later date. So I'm gonna be sharing with you all the tools and features that you need to know about. Along the way, uh, if I cover something a little bit too quickly or there's a specific feature that you want to know more about, please feel free to write that into the GoToMeeting question panel. And at the end of the demo, I'll circle back and answer any additional questions that you may have. So it's right on top of the hour. Let's go ahead and get started. First and foremost, you can download The Brain from our website at www.thebrain.com. It's a free download and you can create a free account. For 30 days, you'll have The Brain Pro trial which means all the bells and whistles of the Brain application. So you can decide what features are going to be most relevant for your line of work or for your purposes and decide what license type you'd like to utilize in the future. Now, after that 30 days, you'll revert back to the free license of the Brain with more limited capabilities, unless of course you choose to purchase a license. We've got many different uh, price points and purchasing options if you go to on our website, the store page, and actually scroll down to the bottom and click on compare editions. There's a really great chart here that tells you each individual feature, what license type they exist in, and what the price point is for that license. Uh, so we've got all the way from a free license of the brain up to Pro license, where you're just on a single standalone desktop. Pro combo, so that allows you to synchronize your brain to the brain cloud and access that brain from other locations. All the way up to Team Brain, where you can actually collaborate in the same brain database with multiple individuals. And if you have any questions about the different licensing options of the brain, please feel free to contact us at support at thebrain.com and we're happy to, uh, to help guide you and, uh, and assist you in making the right decision for the right license type uh, for your purpose of using the brain. So how can the brain be used? The brain can be used to track everything, anything and everything that is important to you. Files, documents, web pages, emails, phone numbers, passwords. I put everything into my brain database. So I've got one application to go to to retrieve all that data at a later date. Now, for that reason, one of the brains that I'm sampling today is a test brain. I want to show you how the brain can be used in a business environment to keep track of customers and projects and documents and invoices and so forth. I don't share my own brain because I do put all that information into my brain. So I've got some proprietary info in that brain database uh, that I don't share on web demos. You can create more than one brain database and any brain or brain databases you create during that first 30 day pro trial, you can continue working on regardless of your license type in the future um, after the 30 day pro trial. So create as many different brain databases as you'd like or just create one brain with all of your digital information. It's a more advanced feature, but at a later date, you can segment brains into smaller topic specific brains to share with other individuals or just work on separately. Um, or you can also merge brains together. I won't be covering those features today, but I wanna make you aware of them that they do exist. So that, so that you know there's no right or wrong when building a brain. Do I put everything in one brain or smaller topic specific brains? It's a very personal choice, it's up to you. So I've got three different brain databases I'm gonna be sharing with you today. The first, as I mentioned, is a sample business brain. And I actually downloaded this brain. If you go to our website, 
and under learn, go to the applications page. There are a variety of different topics and recordings on the brain being used for project management, business development, presentations. The list goes on and on and you can click and watch that video being uh, demonstrated and then also download a copy of that brain that was used in that demo. And when you install the brain application, you would just simply click on file and import. And those brain databases that are uh, in a single file, we call those BRZs, that's a brain archive. So you can import a new BRZ, brain archive. Use those sample brains on our website to sort of kick the tires of the technology or find a topic that's important and relevant to you and use that as the seed for your own brain. Delete what you don't need, add on where, where you like or modify the content that's there and continue on using that brain database as your brain moving forward, your digital brain moving forward. So let's go ahead and get started. As you can see, I have the brain installed. Now, I'm running the brain in what we call dark mode. Um, I like the sort of darker background. It's easier on my eyes. It's a personal choice. There's a lot of modifications within the application so that you can run your brain, your digital brain, um, in a way that just reflects your own personality or that just works for your environment. All highly customizable as far as the color combinations you use, the background uh, wallpaper of the brain. Notice the brain is divided into two main areas, and we refer to these as the plex over on the left, which is made up of a series of interconnected thoughts. And thoughts are the building blocks of the brains that we create. So anytime I click on a thought, it brings that thought into the center of the plex and displays all related information around it. It also updates the content area. So the content area can be made up of notes, file attachments, web links, and so forth. We'll get into all that a little bit later today. But notice that I've sort of moved the notes area or the content area a little bit over to the right. You can click on this bar to reorganize the, the look and feel of the brain. There are some buttons down below so you can actually minimize the notes if you're focused on the Plex or vice versa. I could click here to minimize the Plex, flip to an over under view. So you can really get a layout that best fits your screen real estate. Also, I'll be staying today in what we call normal view. Normal view is the current active thought and one generation away of related thoughts displayed around it. As you continue to build and grow uh, and develop your brain database and add more thoughts and more content, sometimes it's helpful to sort of get the bigger picture. How is all of this information fitting together, this new project that I'm working on? Um, there are some different viewing capabilities. Now these are available for a pro license and, a, and above. So a free license won't be able to switch into outline view. And in outline view, notice I get a much more linear view of the brain. But when I hover over a thought, I can actually expand that thought and see all of its children. And from there, I can expand those thoughts. And so I get a little plus sign over each individual thought. So you start getting sort of the big picture of how all of your information is fitting together. And if I don't want to visualize all my media and entertainment clients, I can click on the little minus sign and just collapse that thought. It didn't delete any content, just removed all of the, uh, the displayed content there. So just a little glimpse of one of the more advanced views of the brain. I can come back and go right back to normal view. And I'll be staying in this view for the remainder of the demo today. Now, I think I may have mentioned that the thought in the very center of the screen is what we call the active thought. It's the current focus of the brain database. And this is something that really differentiates the brain from a typical mind map application. Uh, many of the other mind map apps that I've, I've seen out there display everything on the screen all at once. Here in normal view, uh, by default, I'm just seeing what is directly related to this particular thought, the active thought in the center of the plex. And it only displays what is needed one generation away. Again, we've got the more advanced views. I can show two generations away from the active thought, come back to one. So many different options for you there. But we do thought, call this thought in the very center of the plex, the active thought. Above the active thought is its 
parent thought. So clients falls under eSolutions Consulting. It's one of the departments that I am keeping data on or keeping information about within my brain. My other departments are now being displayed as sibling thoughts. They share the same parent thought. So we have the parent thought up above, the active thought, and then therefore down below we call these child thoughts. They're subcategories of the active thought. So we're starting to develop, to develop a bit of a hierarchical structure. I've got my parent thought, my active thought, my child thoughts down below. Once I click on a child thought, I go to uh, go to my child my thoughts by industry. I get all of that child thoughts or those child thoughts down below. But where we can really break away from a hierarchical structure is with what we call a jump thought. A jump thought is something that is related to the active thought, but it's not necessarily a subcategory or or supercategory up above. And here's a great example. Jim Johnson oversees all client relationships within my company at eSolutions Consulting. If I were to make Jim a child thought down below, notice the brain does let me rearrange my thoughts and change relationships. That's really important because later on as projects uh, evolve and, and things change, a uh, project might be assigned to someone else. You need to relink it within your brain. You don't need to delete it and recreate it somewhere else. You can simply drag it around the Plex and there's a few other tricks I'll share with you today as well. But this makes it look like Jim Johnson is a client of eSolutions Consulting, and that is certainly not the case. Jim doesn't own all of our clients, or our clients don't report directly to Jim, uh, so I don't have him linked as a parent thought. So I like to have him linked as a jump thought, so I can quickly and easily get to that Jim Johnson thought uh, whenever I'm working with client relations. Maybe I've got a scenario where I need to contact all of my clients. I've got a new billing procedure that's uh, starting in the new year. How are we going to best uh, facilitate the delivery of that information to our clients? Uh, can I just send out a tweet or do I need to actually email each individual client? Maybe I should pick up the phone and give each one of them uh, a call and just sort of face-to-face check-in or show up and knock on the, on the office door. Jim is going to have all the answers to these questions, and so therefore, I would click on that Jim thought. I've got his phone number, his email. You'll notice as I click through the brain, whenever I click on a person thought, my brain is like a digital Rolodex. Um, phone numbers, emails, Twitter feeds, Instagram, anything, any information I have about a particular person is accessible from the content area on their thought in my brain. All the different projects they're working on will be linked up there as well. So I've get a really clear picture of all of our business development managers, what projects they're working on, who reports to them, and so forth. Sort of like the visualization of an org chart with easy to access content, uh, contact information, and access to all of their different projects that they've been assigned or that they're responsible for. So let's go back to clients and continue drilling down. Oh, and also really quickly, some of my other jump thoughts are just clients that are not currently you know, active uh, clients within the company. So my 2023 pros, uh, prospects or retired clients or um, you know, anyone that doesn't fall under the category of active client is going to be falling under one of these jump thought areas in my brain. The thoughts down below are only for my active clients. And I think I clicked earlier on clients by industry so I can take a look at my media and entertainment clients. You can see I've got five different media and entertainment clients. My jump thought here is a trade show that many of my media entertainment clients often attend. So Digital Coast is not a client of eSolutions Consulting. However, many of my media and entertainment clients have questions, when, is the, when are the dates of the show next year? What's the, uh, how much does it cost? When do we need to get our reservation in? What's the timeline? All that information easily accessible and related to the category of media and entertainment clients that I have at eSolutions Consulting. So that's another great example of when I like to use that jump thought feature. And I'll go ahead and click on one of my clients. Now, there is suddenly a lot happening on the screen, but it all is starting to make sense. Over on the right, I've got all my notes and content and information about this client. We'll get to that in just a bit. 
on the screen up above, the first thing you might notice is that I have five parent thoughts. So instant dynamics doesn't just simply fall only under media and entertainment. They're also a communications client. I could have clicked down through that path and gotten to the thought that I was looking for. They're a client that we've had for 10 or more years. This makes them a VIP. They're currently up for renewal and they're a gold service level client. Now that's all some really, really valuable information. Uh, information that would probably be buried in a contract or invoices and so forth down in the paperwork that I have linked up down below. But here in the brain, I've got that visualization of all those categories that this particular client falls into. Uh, without using the brain, let's say I was storing this data in a file and folder structure. Yeah, I could make shortcuts from other folders, but if I don't go to that folder to access Instant Dynamics, if I just go in through Media and Entertainment and open up my Instant Dynamics folder, I'd have no visualization of these relationships. And I'm not reminded, and I'm about to just you know send them a quick email, hey, new billing structure, here it is. That's not exactly what we want for this client. This client is a VIP, they're up for renewal. We wanna receive their feedback and make sure they're really, really happy with what we've shared with them. So I am actually going to call up Fred Baxter. He's the account lead for Instant Dynamics. And maybe he and I are gonna to join together on a conference call to communicate uh, this information with this client and make sure everything goes very, very smoothly keeping them happy so that they'll sign on for a new uh, contract for another gold service level contract for another year. Now, so there's the value in those uh, multiple parent thoughts, and I'll show you how those are created today when we start creating a new brain from scratch. Uh, my other feature that I utilize that's particularly helpful are these link labels. We can actually define the relationship between two thoughts. Um, you know, why is a person linked up to a company. Do they work for that company? Um, are, they, uh, are they an ex-employee of that company? And so forth. Here you can see Joe Smith is an advisor for this particular client account. Fred Baxter is the account lead. Sam Smith is actually the junior advisor. So if I have a question about you know, what we're gonna work on with their ongoing projects we have with this client, I can check in with Fred, I would check in with Joe. Sarah would be next on that sort of the ladder of who I want to uh, speak to about this particular account. So, and down below, I've got many different active projects that I'm working on with this client. And as you can see, I like to keep track of the date when that project is launching. That's what's most important to me. So I simply click on that link between the two thoughts. Notice that updates the content area. You can actually add notes and file attachments on links between thoughts, not just on the thoughts themselves. And if I double click on that link, I can modify the link properties. So let's say when we're communicating about this new billing procedure with Instant Dynamics, everything goes really, really well. But they also mentioned at the time, hey, we're not gonna be ready on uh, February uh, for the launch of this all for one ad campaign. We wanna move that back to June. So I'm just gonna make a quick note. June, whoops, let's spell it correctly. June of 2023. I like to color code my links from time to time. Sort of red means go, green means stop. It can really draw your attention to a relationship between two thoughts. And uh, so June is sort of, you know, not too far in the distant future. So I'm just gonna, it's not red, it's not uh, green. Uh, so I've just given that sort of an orange link that really kind of works for me. Um, so that's the link properties to be able to define those two, uh, the relationship between those two thoughts. And I really find a lot of value in that feature in the brain. It's a very tiny feature of the, of the software, uh, but it's just something that uh, can't be facilitated in a file and folder structure, for example. Why does folder X reside inside folder A? You really don't know. It's a subcategory of, of some type, uh, but you don't know if it's a retired project that you were working on, an upcoming project, an urgent project, and those link labels can help to uh, sort of define those relationships, whether it's between a project and a, a company, a person and a document, uh, whatever the case may be. It's a really, really valuable feature for me that I use quite a bit. And of course, as you can see, I can click on any one of these projects that are going on with this uh, client. 
I can see who actually worked on that project for the client. Down below are all of my meeting notes, art assets, um, documentation that went along with, with everything that went into this ad campaign for this client. Uh, one of the presentations we used was this Winning Edge presentation. Here are all the assets that went into that presentation. Different versions are, of that presentation are accessible. And I can see this presentation was also used with a few of my other clients. And I now have it categorized as an archived presentation in my marketing department, which falls under eSolutions Consulting. So I actually did just did a nice little loop there uh, through all of my content to share with you and demonstrate that the brain is non-linear. You know, I click down through my clients by industry, found a client, a project that I'm working on, an asset that was utilized for that project, which falls under the category of uh, my marketing department and up through that branch and, and area of my brain to come back to eSolutions Consulting. Also, every thought that I just clicked on appends itself to this ongoing list at the bottom of the uh, of, of the of the plex, excuse me. <clears throat> this is really a breadcrumb trail. My 200 most recently clicked on thoughts. So if I happen to click past that winning edge presentation, I want to make a few edits on that document. I see it there in my past thought list. I don't need to go navigating down through my brain. I can just click and go directly to that recently activated thought. Um, the past thought list is really great just because we all live such busy lifestyles. We're always getting, uh, you know, interrupted. We get a phone call. Someone steps into our office. We need to look something up in our brain. Some time goes by. We need to get back to work on what we were focused on. And that, uh, past thought list really becomes invaluable for that, uh, that particular type of scenario. You can also create a pin. If you find that you are frequenting a thought within your brain on a daily basis, what I like to do is actually click on the little button here in the uh, taskbar up above, or in the uh, toolbar, I should say, up above, and it creates a pin for that thought. You can also right-click on a thought, many different options in the context menu, uh, and now it'll say to remove pin. There's what's showing up in the context menu. Uh, but a pin just is a nice shortcut to a thought that you are frequenting often within a very large brain. Think of them as keystones to, you know, different areas of a very, very large brain. I've got some brains with five, 10, even 20,000 thoughts. Uh, but there are sort of five or six different, you know, jumping off points into that brain to get into my marketing department, to get into my current active projects area. So I pin those thoughts to get there quickly and easily on and frequently on a daily basis. And when you find that you're no longer frequenting that thought, you can just right click and remove the pin or use that toggle switch in the toolbar up above, just click and it removes the shortcut that you're keeping the pin for that thought. And of course, in a very large brain, you can always do a search as well. When you're searching through the brain, uh, the brain actually utilizes your operating system's indexing capabilities. So on a Windows machine, that means Windows Search, I believe it's called now. It used to be called Windows Desktop Search. It's now Windows Search. Um, and on a Mac, it's Spotlight. So we rely on your operating system to do all the indexing, and it makes the search results accurate within the brain, but also just very fast and, and light for the application. So if I type in the word power, for example, I'm almost instantly matched or met with all the thoughts that contain the word power in the thought name themselves, or down below will be all of my notes and attachments. And notice when I hover over any particular thought, it gives me a preview of that note and it even highlights where the word is appearing in that note. Down below are all of my documents, whether it's a Word document, a PowerPoint, a, uh, a spreadsheet. I can click on any one of those to go directly to that file. This is the Winning Edge uh, presentation that was archived under Corporate Files. And I can click here to launch that application in its native application, uh, or launch that file, I should say, in its native application. Of course, it launched on another monitor here. Um, so I can launch that file, close to go directly back to the, uh, the content uh, for that particular thought. 
So let's go ahead and start talking in depth now a little bit more about all of the uh, file attachments and what's happening in the content area. I am going to just jump back here to reach out. I think it was Instant Dynamics. There it is. Had quite a bit of content. So let's just use this as an example. First and foremost, all the file attachments that you have associated with a thought will be accessible from the very top of the content area. So I see the thought name and that can be turned on and off. If I just right click in the background, I can either choose to show the thought title in the content area um, or not. <clears throat> and a couple other visible features there as well. And down below are all of my file attachments. So this thought has five file attachments associated with it. You can see the little number five there on the icon for Instant Dynamics. And clicking on any one of these will launch that file in its native application. So there I just launched a, a Word document associated with this thought. It's just a test document, but it opened up right there in Word. The brain always launches file attachments in their native application according to your operating system. So that makes the brain uh, cross-platform compatible. I can open this brain on a Mac, and as long as there is an application installed on Mac that can open a .docx file, not a problem. I can launch this document from my MacBook as well. A few exceptions to that rule, and that is uh, PDFs. PDFs will actually launch in the brain's built-in PDF viewer. So I can click and navigate through this uh, PDF document uh, right here in the content area. Or if I click that open button that we saw earlier, that'll launch that PDF in its native application on your OS. So that launch launches in Adobe Acrobat for me. And the other exception to that rule is web pages. Uh, web pages will load up in the brain's built-in browser. Now, this is probably my second favorite feature of the brain application. I've got a lot of favorites, but this is really high up there on the list. Um, a lot of what I do is on the web, uh, research, working, recreation, um, anything. It all happens on the web. I keep track of all the web pages that are very important to me, and I do not keep track of them in my browser bookmarks and favorites. I'm not always on the same browser, let alone the same machine. Um, and quite often, I've got a web page that's closely related to a note, a graphic, a Word document, an email. How do I connect those if I'm storing my web pages in just this long linear list of favorite web pages in Safari or Google Chrome or what have you? There's really no way to do that. But the brain allows me to do that by storing all my most important web pages, easily accessible. Notice I can continue clicking and navigating through this web page without ever leaving the brain. When I'm done, I can just click the X and I go back to the content area and all of my associated uh, documentation with that web page is clearly accessible. And so down below, the content uh, attachments for this particular thought are my notes. I mentioned if, if uh, web pages are my second favorite feature, notes are my first favorite feature. Uh, each individual thought that you create within the brain has its own note associated with it, whether you choose to use it or not. You just click in the notes area and start typing your new information. Info. And of course, up above all of the standard formatting that you may expect, I can select a word or phrase, highlight, bold, italicize, change the color, and so forth. All very, very easy, easily accessible from the notes toolbar, the content area toolbar up above. Notice you can also create checklists. Another favorite feature of mine, I utilize a lot of checklists within the brain to help me stay productive and keep on track of projects and tasks that I'm responsible for. And down below are uh, a couple of graphics as well. So you can copy and paste graphics into, uh, into your brain. So let's go ahead and leave my business brain now and jump into my work brain. Or excuse me, no, I'm not gonna open my work brain, my recreational brain. Uh, the brain is a tabbed interface. So here I am in eSolutions Consulting. I've got a little tab open. And if I click on the plus sign, I can open a new tab. So this will take me to my brain's list. 
These are all the different brain databases that I have. I'm one of those folks that have smaller topic specific brains for different projects that I'm working on or things that I'm interested in. And so I can click to launch that brain in a new tab. You can have the same brain open in multiple tabs. If you've got one massive brain with all of your data in it, but you want to keep a tab open to quickly access your sales, quickly access your new customers, quickly access internal research, what have you, you can have the same brain open in different tabs as well. Um, so this is my real brain, my recreational brain. I keep track of all the different hobbies and interests uh, that I have. Um, and notice my, we'll just use one of my pins up above and go to my weekend checklist. So every Friday, I sort of sit down, read the paper, grab my coffee, and I make my own weekend checklist. Like I said earlier, I love checklists. When something gets done, I can simply check it off the list. Those two did not get done, so I'm not going to check those off the list quite yet. Uh, another really uh, great feature that I like, and checklists, by the way, behave in much the same way as bulleted list or ordered list. There's just a button up above to start a new checkbox. There's keyboard shortcuts as well. If I just put my cursor down and I say, let's say I'm going to build a new tool shed, dash space starts a new checklist. So I need to buy wood, uh, buy screws. Uh, and call for city plans or something like that. So I simply make my new checklist. When something gets completed in some scenarios, I want to timestamp it. My shortcut for the timestamp is Control D. Uh, the button is Insert Date and Time. And you can see there's the little keyboard shortcut that I've associated with Insert Date and Time. Um, that's highly modifiable within the brain. So if you're on a 24 hour clock or you write your date as 11 November, or you want the Thursday, November 11th at 2:35 uh, PM central time, what have you, you can actually modify that through the brain preferences. We might be able to get there in just a bit. I'll show you where that happens, but regardless, this is my real brain. I want to take this off because that is not a real project I'm working on this weekend. And that timestamp, by the way, is really great for keeping track of, you know, when were projects assigned to me? When did I complete that project? Or if I purchase something and it comes under a warranty, I'll purchase on and just control D, add the date and time. So I can always refer back to that at a later date. And notice of, you know, all the different projects that I'm working on, this is, again, my recreational brain. Uh, so I'm a, I'm a very amateur woodworker, but I keep pictures of my projects. I'm building a cedar strip kayak and down along with my kids, uh, their help. And down below are all of the sort of my checklist, what I'm doing next. Down below the, in the thought area over in the Plex are videos. I've recently updated and put on a new video, a uh, guy that I follow on uh, YouTube that makes boats as well. So I watch all of his videos and those play right here in the content area as well. So once again, I never need to leave the brain. Hi, my name's Rod and this is the Orca Boat. When uh, Rod drops a little nugget of information that's really, really great. In one of his videos, he mentioned, oh, on the inside of the, the kayak, I only put one or two coats, not four coats like I would do on the outside. That's some really great information, and it might be lost in a two-hour video on uh, YouTube. So I'll just grab that info, and I think that's a real, yeah, uh, lead epoxy. Here it is. Only one coat of epoxy on the interior. So I'll just take that little note out of the video and paste it right in there. Uh, my supplies have access to different products that I've purchased online, so it takes me directly to uh, that actual product. Um, or email confirmations, tracking numbers, and so forth. So everything that's going on with this particular project, whether it's epoxy or sawhorses that I'm building or whatever the case may be, all within a few clicks of one another. And I obviously you didn't come here today to learn how to build a kayak, but I just shared with you my own images, my own notes, uh, what did we see? Web pages, videos, emails, 
all within a few clicks of one another and not distributed through all these different applications on my uh, on my computer. I'm not jumping into my web browser books and favorites, my email folders and files and so forth. I've got everything I need within a few clicks and closely related to other projects that I may be working on over the weekend, fixing a washer and dryer, notes on my part numbers and so forth, all clearly uh, accessible for me. And the great thing about this is, and I'm gonna share another real quick feature before we start building our own uh, individual brain thought by thought, if I can get there, there we go. Um, I have this brain synced to the cloud. So it syncs up to uh, um, www.thebrain.com and you can log in from the brain to access your brain online or by syncing to the cloud, you can download that brain on four other devices. So I've got access to the same brain, whether I'm here at my home office, which I am today, at the Brain Technologies, on my traveling laptop, or even on my iPhone. Now I'm sharing with you now, uh, this is my real phone. So there's the reminder today, Brain 101, if you can see on the computer or on the uh, camera, I'm holding up my phone. So everything, whoops, it just went blank. There we go. So I'll load up my brain. You're seeing on the screen, everything that my phone is displaying and I can open up my brain app. Now the brain always takes you to your most recently active thought. Another one of my hobbies is sourdough bread. So here I've got a recipe for sourdough bread. I go to the notes. I've got pictures of my bread. I've got all my schedule of, you know, when different ingredients get added, uh, how long to cook and so forth, all easily accessible. If I needed to get to my kayak thought, I'm out in the garage, what's my next step? It's under my weekend checklist. There's my kayak build. And maybe I'm, you know, I've got a little bit of time. I want to, I'm ready to watch this video. I can go to the video, watch it on my phone and so forth. I didn't have to go digging it up once again through YouTube or anything like that. All easily accessible from my phone, from my brain, which I take with me on my iPhone. So now how did all of this come to be? Let's go ahead and create a new brain from scratch. I'm going to click on file and select to create a brain. So I'll just call this my 101 brain. Now the brain will randomly select one of your different uh, themes with, with customized wallpaper and color coded uh, notes and so forth. So this is one of the themes that I have I've, that I've built on my own. This is all, like I said, <laughs> goes back to what I said earlier, very highly customizable. So you can find your own wallpaper, color codes that work best for you. There are some themes that are built into the brain so you can play around with those and, and select something that works for you and reflects your own personality just to get the creative juices flowing. I'm gonna switch this to light blue just because it is easy on the eyes. And let's go ahead and start creating some thoughts. Every thought in the brain has three small gates, the parent gate, the jump gate, and the child gate. So to create a new child thought, I simply click and drag and I'll have an area for my personal info and click and drag again, an area for my business. <clears throat> and under personal, I'll keep thoughts for all of my family, uh, my friends. Now I'm clicking and dragging. And notice that spell check is turned on. That gets turned on in the content area toolbar, that little ABC with the check. So if I type in some gibberish, and hit the space bar that uh, it, it's underlined in red. So spell check appears. You'll see it happening. I'm a terrible speller, so you'll see it happening all the time when I'm typing. But it happens in the notes area. It happens when you're creating new thoughts. Uh, so an area for my woodworking, uh, my bikes. Oh, and also you don't need to just click and drag off of the gate. You can right click on the uh, on any particular thought to get to the context menu. And some of these, as I mentioned earlier, have keyboard shortcuts. So here I can create a child from the context menu, an area for my bread. And um, one more hobby, this time I'll use the keyboard shortcut F6, a thought where I'm keeping track of car maintenance. So, <clears throat> 
Also, from time to time, it becomes important to maybe delete a thought. We talked earlier about moving thoughts, and we're going to share a few more of those with you. Actually, I'll do one of those right now. Let's say I had a thought for bird watching. And I suddenly decided I was no longer interested in bird watching. Now, this is something that I share often with, with uh, users of the brain. I typically don't delete content in my brain. And the reason being is uh, I've got brain databases. Uh, I started using the brain with 1.0, the brain 1.0, when it was released in 1998. So uh, my brain databases are over 20 years old, some of them and I've never deleted any content. I simply find ways to archive it, so out of sight, out of mind, but it's still there if I do a search. <clears throat> uh, if I run some reports, I might go, oh my gosh, I did some research on this particular individual back when they worked at Apple, and oh, now they're you know uh, working at another company or what have you. So I've got a lot of really helpful information. Your digital brain never forgets, as I've mentioned earlier, my own organic brain. I'm not going to say anything about your organic brains, but I know mine forgets all the time. So it's really great to find an archived piece of information that I, I suddenly need to recall years later. So bird watching, I wouldn't delete that thought. I would, my process would be to create a jump thought for archived hobbies. I'll just call it my archives and bird watching. I'm going to click and drag and link up to archives. So notice it falls under both categories and now I can right click and unlink from personal. So I've essentially moved that thought to a different area of the brain. I like to sometimes share little features that are uh, within the application. Obviously these are in the manual. If you ever want to read our full manual of the, of the brain and how it works, but another feature is, let's say I decide I'm no longer taking cars. I'm going to ride bikes everywhere. So I want to archive my cars thought. Instead of dragging, connecting it to archive, then unlinking it from personal. Notice I haven't released my mouse trigger yet. I am going to hold down the shift key when I hover over archives. And that is the exclusive parent thought feature. I have moved cars from personal over to archives by holding down the shift key. So it unlinked any other parent thoughts that it had for me. That's really great for projects. You know, I'm working on project X and it falls under all these categories. And finally we decide, all right, project X is sidelined. I just wanna move it over to a thought that I have called sidelined. It's got 10 other parent thoughts. I hold down the shift key when I'm linking it to the sidelines parent thought and it loses all the other links and it's only linked to sidelines. So exclusive parent thought by holding down the shift key. And I'm gonna share one more trick with you. Um, obviously from time to time you do need to be able to delete some thoughts. So let's say I accidentally just add some gibberish. Now, yes, I could alt click on this thought and rename it, utilize that thought space for something else, rename it. Alt click is great for renaming thoughts. You know, companies change their name or you spelled something wrong, you need to go back and fix it. Just alt click on the thought, opens up the thought properties display. Um, in this case, I don't need to rename it. I just want to delete this thought. So I right click and select to forget this gibberish thought. It's no longer appearing in the Plex, but it's still there. You haven't deleted it yet. And this is a safety net in the brain. Um, it uh, is a way of, to protect you so you don't accidentally delete content. You know, no one, if they're moving their mouse too quickly, they right click, they mean to select unlink, but they select delete instead, and now you've deleted content, that would be bad. So you've forgotten that thought, you can run a report, and if I say show me all of my forgotten thoughts, there it is in the report. Or a free user, a free license user of the brain can go to options and select show forgotten thoughts. So as you're navigating through the brain, you'll see forgotten thoughts appearing a little bit grayed out, but they'll still be there. And then you can uh, turn off showing forgotten thoughts in the Plex, close your report at a later date. So it's the step one of the delete process. First, we forget the thought. Then we can right click either in the report or on the thought itself, right click and I can remember to reactivate this thought or now I'll permanently delete it. So it's no longer showing up in my forgotten thought uh, report, 
and no longer showing up in the plex. I've deleted that thought. Here's the shortcut. It's again with that shift key. I create some gibberish again. If I right click, remember, I go to forget. But if I shift right click, I will go straight to delete. So that's the safety net, the keystroke. So allowing you to, uh, to get to that delete option. So now I can permanently delete that thought. Another shortcut that you absolutely need to know about is the semicolon. Whether you are just getting started using the brain or you're a long time user, um, once you know about the semicolon, you'll start using it quite often. I still do to this day. Semicolon allows you to create, I'll go to my friend's thoughts, uh, thought, multiple individual thoughts at one time. It's a great time saver. I don't have to click, drag, create over and over again. I can just start typing. This is a great example. I know my friend's names off the top of my head, so I'll just start typing, separating them with a semicolon. And as you can see, I created five individual thoughts at one time. So you can cut and paste into that field. Let's say you get an email from your boss. Here's a project that I want you to outline or you know, start, start documenting, researching, what have you, these 10, 20 components. If you can get that into a semicolon delineated list, you can copy and paste into the brain and start populating areas of your brain very, very quickly. It's a great time saver. Now I mentioned the word outline. I just wanna share with you, it's a more advanced feature, but just so you know that they're there, there's import and export capabilities of the brain. One of the really great import capabilities, you can import an existing folder structure, but you can also import a text outline. And there's actually some hidden features within those uh, text outlines as, as well. You can send a note into support at thebrain.com. We'll send you some sample text or Excel spreadsheets that can be imported into the brain. Uh, other mind mapping applications can be imported in as well. So there are some really great import capabilities. The outline uh, is a tab delineated outline. And so you can import a structure that would give you multiple generations of thoughts. So let's say you're working on a particular company and down, you know, uh, one level down and tabbed over are people's names. One level down and two tabs over are their responsibilities. One level down from there and three tabs over are all of their projects that they worked on, what have you. You know, you get this great document, copy and paste it into your brain as a text outline or import it in, and you can populate areas of your brain very, very quickly. More advanced feature, but just wanted to share with you that it's there. Also, I mentioned earlier that, uh, you know, you find one thought that falls under multiple categories. The brain helps you to discover that information. And here's what I mean by that. So under businesses, I'm going to be keeping track of my clients, my projects, my business team, my finances, and so forth. One of my business team members is Brigitte. But notice, I'm just going to type in the letter B. The brain opens up its existing thought list, and it's showing me all thoughts that have a word that start with the letter B. Um, so there's that bird watching thought, which I archive, business bikes, so forth, but there's Brigitte. And if I continue typing BR, it shows me all thoughts that have BR and so forth. So I can't miss it, there's Brigitte. I'm gonna double click and link to that existing Brigitte thought. And in this case, I'm not gonna right click and unlink Brigitte from friends because Brigitte falls into both categories. And you'll find how useful this feature is as your brain grows and evolves over time. I'm still discovering in some of my even business brains, I'm working with a new client, uh, client Alpha Corp. And I've got all there. I'm gonna share a couple of neat little features with you. I'm gonna say comma contacts. And the reason why I add a comma there is because contacts is gonna be a commonly used thought name. All of my different clients, I hope I have a hundred different clients by the time I'm done building out my brain and it continues to evolve. But each individual client thought is gonna have an area where I'm keeping track of the contacts that I know at that company. Um, so I don't want a hundred individual thoughts called contacts. For commonly used thoughts names, I'll add a comma either at the beginning or the end. And what that does is it actually appends the parent name onto the new child thought that you've just created. 
So I didn't create a thought called contacts. I just created a thought called alpha corporation contacts. And that'll help me when I'm doing a search because I'm also going to have beta corporation, delta, gamma, and so forth. So here's beta, delta, and so forth. They'll all have their contacts, so comma contacts, under delta and under beta, comma, whoops, comma, contacts. And now when I do a search, oh, I need to find my delta contacts. I type in, start typing in contacts. I know which contacts thought to click on. Not alpha, not beta, delta, and I can go directly to that thought. And here again, sort of circling back to why this one feature is so great, one of my contacts is, uh, my is oh, my friend Shelly got a job there. So I just start, oh, I already have a thought for Shelly. I don't need to create a new thought for Shelly, add in her phone number, email, and so forth. That obviously is all gonna be over here in the notes and all of her contact information and so forth, her thought is actually already there in my brain. And my brain, my digital brain, reminds me constantly of you know, existing content that I have. I'm doing some research on a, on a company and I'm creating a new you know, thought name underneath there and I realize, oh, wait a minute, I met this person at a trade show five years ago, 10 years ago. Oh, this person works for that person. I have them as an assistant. That's an interesting connection that I've just discovered within my brain. That happens all the time, especially with my people thoughts. It really uh, sort of lifts the veil on a lot of information that, uh, that my own organic brain may have missed. Um, also, let's get back to Brigitte. And let's say Brigitte is going to manage my Alpha Corporation client. And I'll even click on that link. So... So you can see how the brain is starting to fall together. Brigitte has links, you know, whether I'm thinking Brigitte, my friend that might want to go bowling this weekend, Brigitte, my team member that needs to have those sales order forms in by the end of the week, uh, who's managing Alpha Corporation? That's Brigitte. They all link to that one thought rather than having multiple different Brigitte thoughts within my brain with different content on each one. So let's start bringing in some data. First and foremost, Alpha Corporation, I'm gonna write up a welcome letter to this particular client. The letter doesn't exist yet. I could go to Word and create it there and then bring it into the brain. You'll know you've become a power user of the brain when you create the thought in the brain first. You know, I'll have a checklist over here of all the content that will go into this letter. Uh, my uh, existing clients, our reputation, our goals. I want to introduce uh, my company and so forth. And when those get into the document, I check them off the list. Where's the document? I'm going to create that from within the brain. So I click on attach and I select to add a file from a template. Now, before I click here, I want to show you how I populated my template list. Just simply go down to template help Follow these on-screen instructions. It's going to open a directory, and anything you drop into that directory can be a new file for a thought in the brain. Your company letterhead, so you can customize all of these documents. Your company letterhead, a fax cover sheet, a sales order form, a new program that you just installed, and your OS knows what to do with the dot blank dot ABC file. Save a blank dot ABC file here, and the brain can launch that in this new program for you as well. So that's my customized template list. So when I go back to click on attach, add a file from a template, here is my customized template list with all the file types that I use most often. And down below are system templates. So the brain recognizes, okay, he's got Word, PowerPoint, Excel, so forth. In this case, I'm gonna use a file from my template list, my own company letterhead. So it saves a company letterhead as an attachment for this thought. And now I'm just gonna, for time's sake, I'm just typing in some gibberish. I'm gonna save this. It doesn't ask me where I wanna save it to. It's saved internally inside my brain database. So I've got easy access to that document in the future. I can launch it again to continue adding new information. If I ever make some changes that are really interesting and I wanna save this as a new copy, I'll say file, save as, and your OS gives you the existing location of that file. That's where I wanna save it as, 
welcome letter number two. And I close that, and so now I have two attachments on this thought, my welcome letter and my welcome letter number two. So really, really easy to create new documents from scratch within the brain. And of course, we can drag and drop existing content into the brain. I have a file and folder document. I don't use files and folders too much because like I said, I do keep everything in the brain. But um, I've got this sample list of documents. And let's say these pertain directly to a project that we're working on with Alpha Corporation. I can simply click and drag right into the brain. Now, the default setting, as you can see, the original document is still there. I've brought in an, a copy of that document. So I now have an internal copy inside my brain. It created a, a new thought. The new thought name is the document name, and it has attached to it an internal copy of that file. That's the default setting in the brain. I like to change that default setting, and I'm gonna show you how I do that. I click on Options and go into Preferences. Lots that you can do inside Preferences, and I've referenced this a few times on today's webinar. Here's where you can set up all of your own keyboard shortcuts for all the different actionable items within the brain application. Um, the Notes Editor, I can't remember, oh, the, uh, changing the, formatting of the timestamp and so forth. So a lot of modifications can be done here to really make the brain work best for your environment. In this scenario, this is a really, really important setting that you can use on your brain. And that's deciding when you drag and drop, what happens? How does the application behave? Does it move that file into the brain? Does it just copy? That's the default setting. Or am I just going to link to that file? Nothing goes into the brain, but a path to the original file. Maybe the original file is on a network, other people have access to it, to it, they're modifying it, updating it, you just wanna to link to that file, and that's what you use most often. Uh, change that setting within the brain. I like to move in files internally, so now I'm gonna grab another file, I'm gonna grab this parking framework, and I click and drag. Notice parking framework is no longer there, I've moved it internally into the brain application. That's the setting I prefer. So that now, when I sync this brain to the brain cloud, so I upload it to, uh, it actually goes to app.thebrain.com, but you can go to the brain website, click on login, and access all of your brains online. My files and attachments that are internal go with the sync. They are uploaded to the servers at the brain tech, at the brain technologies, it's our servers. Let me give you some information about that <laughs> since I just threw that out there. Uh, our servers are highly protected and very secure. We're very happy with our security. Uh, they're um, uh, Windows, um, Azure servers. S passwords are salted and hashed and I could go on and on. There's no third party access to those servers. We're very, very happy with our, our security when syncing your, cloud, your brain to the brain cloud. Even myself, an administrator, doesn't have access to your data. I can see that you've got an account, that you've synced a brain, uh, but I can't access any of those files, any of those notes, any of that data. Uh, it's all protected by your login to your account. So I can safely and securely log into my brain to access these files online, or when I'm syncing to another machine or to my phone, I can access those file internal files and documents there. If I sync a shortcut to a file, I am just syncing the path. And if I open this same brain on my MacBook, for example, my MacBook doesn't know what to do with a path that's C colon forward slash forward slash blah, blah, blah. So uh, that would be um, uh, uh, useless on a, on a Mac machine, a, a shortcut from a Windows uh, machine. So it's up to you to decide what's gonna work best. You can always go back and whoops, let me activate that thought. I can right click on a, an internal file and move or copy this file out of the brain. If I had created a shortcut, I could right click and move that file out of the brain. And again, not to confuse you, but just to let you know, it's all highly customizable. You can also use keyboard shortcuts. So I can click and drag. I'm about to move this file in. That's my default setting, right? But if I hold down the Alt key, I just create a shortcut to that file. So the original is still there. Now I've just got a shortcut. I know that by the little black arrow icon over to that file on my desktop or in that desktop folder. 
So those are the different options you have. Feel free to set up the brain to uh, work best for your environment. You can also drag and drop web pages. So here I've got some sample websites. Let's say I'm working on a new web design for this client. I'll create a new thought, new web design. And here are all of my design ideas. I just want to drag and drop from the address bar in your favorite browser. Don't drag and drop the tab that has its own predefined set of rules by the browser. I click and drag the icon in the address bar. So I'm in Chrome. I drag and drop and it creates a new thought. And that content loads up right there in my uh, brain's built-in browser. So I've got easy access to that uh, website. Even though it's interactive, I can still launch it right here in my Brains browser. And now, once again, we can sync this Brain to the cloud so I can access this Brain from my phone, from my other devices where I log into the Brain. If I go to the Brain website, I would click on Login. And I'm already logged in. It's going to load up all of my online brains. One of them is going to be the new 101 brain. There it is that I just created today. So I can click and access this brain online. I can add new information from the web client and sync once again uh, back on my desktop to, to keep the brain in sync. Or if I add new content on the desktop and sync, it'll uh, give me access to that access to that information here on the cloud as well. So I can create new client thoughts, Gamma, and their phone number, 444-4567. So I do all of that, as you can see, from the web client. And when I return to the brain and sync, the brain syncs in the background every three to five minutes. I've just forced a sync, so I click on the cloud icon. And now when I go to my clients list, there's Gamma and their phone number. So what I added on the cloud is now accessible to me on the uh, desktop machine as well. So I realize I sped things up there a little bit right at the end because I wanted to make sure that we finished on the hour. We did get a couple of questions from Zach, so I want to go ahead and answer those. If you have time, please stay with us. The questions always take us in a new direction. That's a lot of fun. Uh, if you do need to jump off the call now, today's webinar was recorded. You can send a note to support at thebrain.com and get a recording of today's webinar so that uh, even though I'm talking so fast, you can watch it at your own pace. Um, you can always contact us, support at thebrain.com with additional questions in the future if you ever need anything. Uh, but if you can, just uh, three questions that came in from Zach. Number one was, uh, can you link a thought from one brain to another? That's an excellent question. And yes, you certainly can. Each thought in the different brains that you create actually gets two URLs. The first is the local thought URL. And if you sync that brain to the cloud, you've got an online URL as well. So there's ways to share your brain online. If you uh, make your brain publicly accessible, you can tweet out to the world, hey, go see my brain at, or go visit this specific thought at blah, blah, blah. And to get those, I right click on a thought and here's the web thought URL and the local thought URL. So let's say Gamma is a new customer of mine that's also owned by a friend that I have a thought for in my other brain. So I'm gonna copy the local thought URL for Gamma. I'm gonna close this 101 brain and go over to eSolutions Consulting. And let's say Sarah Smith is uh, the new owner of Gamma, this new customer or client that I have a thought for my other brain. So I right click and I select the option that says paste web link. Um, notice it creates a new thought called gamma. And when I launch, it follows the very specific rule that the brain follows always launch attachments in their native application. So the native application for that local thought URL is the brain It launches the brain, the correct brain and takes me directly to the correct thought. And if I want, I can right click and copy the uh, web thought URL. And in my browser, I'll control V and go directly to that brain online. Now, the only reason I can get there to this thought online is because I am already logged in. This is a private brain. If you were to paste that URL that I had, here's what it looks like, into your browser, you'd get an error message, not an error message, a warning message that says you don't have access to this brain. 
So I would have to give you access to the brain. Now we're getting into a whole nother field of team brain and brain access and so forth. Uh, you can make your brain publicly accessible so that anyone can get there from the web page, or excuse me, from the desktop application, I would click on uh, online brain access and sharing and allow public access and save. And once I do that, save and sync those changes up to the cloud, that sort of unlocks this brain so that anyone that has the URL can get to that thought or that brain. Um, those, uh, once you have a brain publicly accessible, it's not getting indexed by uh, Google or anything like that. The only way you can find a thought. So it, I know it says publicly accessible, but it's not available to the entire public. You have to know the URL in order to get to a thought or to a brain. Zach also asked, is there a way to link the smaller brains to each other? Yeah, so that's what I think I just shared with you, how you can link two brains from one another. I can also, we're getting into some more advanced features, but really quickly, this is a lot of fun. I can copy, I, I hold down control and I'm clicking on a few thoughts. Let's go to Alpha Corporation. I'm going to control click on the gate and even Brigitte. Uh, so any thought that I control click on adds itself to this list. If I control click again, it's a toggle, it goes in and out. So I can copy a group of thoughts. I'm going to copy those nine thoughts and I'm going to right click and paste them down below. So those nine thoughts are now pasted into this other brain. So you can copy a group of thoughts and paste them in or just link one thought. You can also merge two entire brains together. Again, we're sort of getting into some more advanced features, but those capabilities do exist. We have a webinar on our website called The Brain 202. And you could do a search for The Brain 202 recording on our website. And uh, I go through these steps in great detail to see how you can merge brains and all the features that are available there for you when you copy a grouping of thoughts, all the different modifications you could do at one time in that select thought box that shows up. Um, and Zach asks, is there an undo button? Yes, I want to undo pasting all those thoughts. So before I do that, I'm going to turn off my autosync. Autosync clears the undo. As soon as you sync to the cloud, this brain might be synced to, you know, four other, three other machines. Uh, so the undo becomes kind of useless in that scenario or difficult. So as soon as it syncs, you can't undo. I haven't synced this brain yet and auto sync did not kick in. So now when I click on edit, undo, I can undo the pasting of those, what was it? 10, nine thoughts. So uh, edit, undo. There you can see the undo is grayed out because this brain synced in the background. So as soon as the brain syncs or as soon as you close the application, that um, sort of clears the cache, so to speak, on the undo feature. So when you're making these big edits in brains, let's say I'm selecting a whole bunch of thoughts and I want to delete them. I shift, right click. I'm going through some big features real quickly. But now I can delete these thoughts. Before I do big, big changes like that, I typically turn off my auto sync so that if I then delete those thoughts and go, oh, oh, wait a minute, I, I deleted the thought for Brigitte. Oh, I didn't know I had that in my selection box. Edit, undo, and I've, and I've got it back. So um, that's one of the little tricks that I use. Another trick that I would use is file back up to brain archive. So I can archive my brain as it existed in a current state uh, in time. And if I then come back to my brain at a later date and go, wait a minute, where did all that content go? Oh my gosh, I deleted it yesterday when I was clearing house or what have you. I can just extract that brain zip, that BRZ, and recover all of that data. These BRZs are really, really great for backing up your data. It's another great way to share a brain with other user, brain users and so forth, but it's just really, really great for backup. And by the way, the brain keeps track of everything that you're doing. So each individual thought has its own history. If I click on alpha, uh, that opens up the thought properties display. I can click on the little hourglass and it gives me a history of all the changes that have happened on this thought. And that's, this is a brain that got created today. So that's a pretty boring history. Here's an older brain, Fred Baxter. Let's take a look at his history. It's actually probably gonna take a while to pop up because his history 
Now, this thought could be 10 or 15 years old. Uh, but all that content will there uh, will show up there. So there it's just thinking about opening that up. <clears throat> and then one last question that did come in from Zach. Uh, I know we're out of time, but can you quickly show uh, how to put an already created thought into the timeline um, efficiently? Absolutely. So here's the history on Fred Baxter. You can see all the, all the way back to 2019. Let's see how old this brain is. That thought got created uh, by me back in 2017. Um, so there's the history on this thought, what happened and when. That is a particularly great feature in a team brain environment. So you can see who modified the thought, what they modified, when that change took place and so forth. And to get the thought into the timeline. So that's a feature we didn't even talk about today. Timeline is this nice scrolling timeline that can appear at the bottom of, uh, of your brain. And if I want to, it's basically, uh, I use the timeline for adding new events into, uh, into the brain. So if I, was gonna, if I were going to add a new event, there is a keyboard shortcut for add event. So that's the fastest way to do it. Is it control E? I just don't know. But it's uh, insert and you're inserting a, ba -ba -ba. no, attach, I'm sorry attach and you are attaching an event. So I do not have a keyboard shortcut for create event, but that would, you mentioned the word specifically efficiently. I think the most efficient way to add an event for Fred Baxter, let's say we've got a meeting today at 4 p.m. would have a keyboard shortcut. So control whatever your keyboard shortcut is. In this case, I'm gonna click on attach and create an event. <laughs> it's already popping up as you can see down in the timeline. So today at 4 p.m. You know what? I'm going to make this last week at 4 p.m. just so you can see what the reminders look like. So last week on 11-1 at 4 p.m., we were supposed to have a meeting to, to discuss stuff. And I want the brain to give me a reminder 10 minutes prior to that event. Great. I'll go ahead and click away. It's going to save that change. It placed it, as you can see, it scrolled uh, really quickly over to uh, Tuesday, November 1st. And I think, yes, there it is. <laughs> so there's the reminder that's popping up. I am one week past due on my meeting with Fred Baxter to discuss stuff. So that's what your reminders will look like. The brain where you place the event uh, needs to be open. It doesn't need to have focus. Like I can even snooze this. I'll snooze it for five minutes click the Z's, it can even be minimized, then I can be working away on something and I'll be reminded of, of hey, I missed, uh, or I've got an upcoming event with Fred Baxter to discuss stuff. So it would pop up, uh, even if the brain was you know, not in the forefront, uh, so to speak. Um, so that's really the quickest way, attach event, and then you could pick your date and time and add that right into the timeline down below. This, like I said, is a test brain. Um, I don't open up my timeline in my lower bloom brain because I just have, you know, dentist appointments, doctor's appointments, things like that, that kids soccer games, whatever that you don't need to concern yourself with. But regardless, um, I use the timeline down below specifically for reminders. That's what I really like. So the brain reminds me I've got a meeting, I've got to make a call and so forth. But I talk to a lot of historians that put events of, you know, what happened on uh, Thursday, January 3rd, 1992, you know, what have you. So uh, they're keeping track of, of um, historic events in the, in the timeline. There is a, um, you know, if you're an archaeologist, the, uh, of the timeline only goes back so far. <laughs> so we had to pick a date and time. So, of course, we picked year zero. Um, so anything prior to that, you can't create. So if you're a historian and you're looking at, you know, evolution, something BC or whatever, the brain timeline is, is not the tool that you're going to want to use for that because it simply doesn't exist according to the brain's timeline. Um, um, yeah, I think that's all I have to say about that. Thank you, Zach, for, uh, you know, popping in with some unique questions that sort of showed us a few new additional features of the brain software. Thank you everyone for joining me today. Always a pleasure to introduce, introduce the brain to new users. If you do have questions again in the future, 
please feel free to contact us, support at thebrain.com. We're happy to hear from you. And during business hours, when you're on our website, you may notice from time to time, you know, Matt is here. Would you like to ask him a question or Juan or a number of other uh, different individuals? That's our support team. That's really me. That's really us. Uh, not a bot. That's a real human that you can talk to to ask questions about the software and, and sort of further your knowledge about how to use uh, the brain software uh, with a little bit of help if ever need be. We're always there for you. So thanks so much for joining me today. Have a great weekend. If uh, it applies, happy Veterans Day and thank you for your service. Um, thanks everyone for, uh, for being here today. Have a great weekend and as always, enjoy your brain. Thank you.